The NHL offseason always features a ton of player movement, intriguing deals, and head-scratching decisions. This summer has been no different, but it's part of the reason why we love being fans of hockey. So let's break down the biggest trades of this offseason. It's no secret around the league that the Vegas Golden Knights have done an incredibly poor job managing their cap space. Their previous issues have cost them players like Mark andre Fleury, Nate Schmidt, Yvgani Dadanov, and Cody Eakin. So as we come closer the next year, that poor management of cap space reared its ugly head again. The Golden Knights offered a contract extension to Riley Smith for three years, 15 million and one to Brett Howden for one year, 1.5 million. But the only way they could do so was by clearing some cap space room. Income that Carolina Hurricanes to take advantage of the Golden Knights predicament, Hurricanes offered to help the Knights by taking Max Pacioretty and Dylan Coughlin off their hands in exchange for future considerations. But it would clear up the cap space required for the Knights to extend their other players. If the Knights were in a better position, they would have laughed at this deal. They were backed into a corner and were forced to accept, parting ways with their former captain, Pacioretty, who at 33 years old put up 19 goals and 18 assists for 37 points in just 39 games played. While overall with his time in Vegas, Pacioretty totaled 97 goals and 97 assists for 194 points in 224 games. But Vegas lost not only a 20-plus goal scorer, but had to throw in a young 24-year-old defenseman, Coughlin. As a defenseman, Coughlin scored three goals and 10 assists for 13 points in his 59 games last year, and also recorded 61 blocks, 62 hits, and 20 takeaways. For the Hurricanes, they seemingly addressed a lot of their problems from last year while giving up next to nothing. The Hurricanes finished ninth in scoring last year and struggled to score efficiently in the postseason, so you add the talents of Pacioretty in the lineup and you've immediately boosted your team's scoring potential. Not to mention Pacioretty's leadership quality, which will pay dividends in the locker room. Unfortunately, Pacioretty recently tore his Achilles and will require surgery in approximately six months of rehab. However, if Pacioretty can get healthy and return for the stretch run, this puts the Carolina Hurricanes a step closer to achieving their goal of winning the Stanley Cup, while the Vegas Golden Knights might again struggle to secure a playoff spot next year. The Minnesota Wild had a tough choice ahead of them as their salary cap space was dwindling. Just last year, the Wild had to buy out Zach Parise and Ryan Suter's contracts just to have $4.7 million in dead cap space. So either they would have to trade two or three players and really gut their roster, or trade one big player like Kevin Fiala and give them a fighting chance in the future. The Wild went with the latter option, trading Fiala for the Los Angeles Kings 19th pick in 2022 draft and defenseman Brock Faber. This deal increases the Wild's dead cap space to over $12.7 million this season and then $14.7 million through 2024-25 along with acquiring a young defender who played his college years in Minnesota and represented the USA in the Beijing Olympics. Not to mention, the Wild have a reputation for building up a good defenseman, so this pairing could pay off in the future. But of course, it's not all rainbows and sunshine for the Wild. They had to part ways with Kevin Fiala, who was coming off a career-best 85 points in 82 regular season games in 2021-22 and three points in six playoff contests. At only 26 years of age, Fiala is just about to enter his prime as his new contract, seven years, $55 million, takes into effect. Fiala addresses the Kings' needs, as last year the Kings were 20th in goals per game. Fiala himself scored 33 goals and assisted on 52 others. He also had 17 points on the power play, which would be a great asset for the Kings, who finished 27th in power play conversion. So the Kings should find an instant scoring boost from the second line as Fiala is paired with Philip Denault. The Kings finished third in the Pacific Division last year and were eliminated in the first round by the Oilers. So the addition of Fiala could help them push deeper into the playoffs, but it's uncertain if he's the only missing piece for the storied franchise. 
Well, for the Wild, you could say they dealt a bit too soon as other teams like the Red Wings were supposedly interested in Fiala. They did manage to tick off their goals as they cleared up future cap room space and added a couple young, talented players. Just two years prior to the NHL draft, Chicago Blackhawks agreed to part ways with their star player, Alex DeBrincat. For the Ottawa Senators, number 7th and number 39th pick for the 2022 draft, and an additional third round pick in the 2023 draft. When the trade was announced, it left many around the hockey world confused by the Blackhawks' decision. Dabrinkat is a young star in the making who is paired incredibly well with the Blackhawks' star, Patrick Kane, as the two have shown amazing chemistry. Every year, Dabrinkat has improved his game, finishing last year with 41 goals, 37 assists, and 78 points. The only thing that makes sense is that perhaps, with Dabrinkat entering the final year of his contract, the Blackhawks weren't confident in his ability to re-sign him. Still, even if that was the case, they could have done better than what they've got. But one man's loss is another man's treasure, as the Senators were able to swoop in and immediately address several of their problems last year. In the 2021-22 season, the Senators finished 23rd overall in goals scored and seemed to tether between going all-in on a rebuild or pulling off a big trade to improve their competitive standings. They went with a ladder as Dabrinkat had already surpassed the 40-goal mark twice in his first five NHL seasons and averaged 160 goals and 307 points in 368 career games. This scoring output will help the Senators propel up the goals scored standings along with Dabrinkat's power play scoring ability and his speed to draw penalties. Although this move makes the Senators more competitive, there are still a couple more pieces away from contending seriously for the Stanley Cup. This is a step in the right direction. However, all of this depends on the Senators' ability to re-sign Dabrinkat. Otherwise, it'll just be a one-year rental. As for the Blackhawks, the number seven pick ended up being Kevin Korchinski, who the Blackhawks hope will transfer his great defensive skills to the big leagues, along with a unique offensive combination. But even if Korchinski turns out to be the real deal, it will be a couple of years before he really shows his true potential, compared to Dabrinkat, who had just peaking towards his prime when they traded him. This one might be a bit confusing at first, so bear with us. Let's break it down by teams. First, the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens traded Alexander Romanov and the 98th overall pick to the Islanders for the 13th overall pick in the first round. But they didn't stop right there. They used the 13th pick and 66th pick to trade for the Blackhawks center, Kirby Dock. Now that the most complicated part is behind us, let's unpack this a little more. Why would the Canadians do this deal when Romanov was a solid rotational player and a fan favorite? There are two reasons. First, the Canadians have a couple other defensemen ready to fill Romanov's spot. Second, Romanov was about to be a restricted free agent and would no doubt expect a bigger piece of the pie. So it seems like the Canadians rather gamble on Doc, who came into the league with some hype but has largely failed to live up to it. The potential is still there, so it's more of a wait-and-see approach from the Canadian side. Wait and see if Doc ends up being a solid player, or do they just give up Romanov and picks for nothing? That's quite a gamble. And we aren't sure if this move really impacts the Canadians' team going into next season, as Doc hasn't proven to be a big needle mover so far. Meanwhile, the Islanders' part of the deal is interesting. New York failed to make the playoffs last season, so it seems as if they're looking to shake things up and get some momentum going into next season. Romanov will bring his patented physical play to the Islanders' defensive line, and it's unlikely the Islanders were going to draft anyone better than Romanov with their original 13th pick. Besides, they were looking for impactful players right now, not a rookie who might do something in a couple of years. Lastly, there is the curious case of the Chicago Blackhawks. Previously, the Blackhawks traded Brandon Hagel and, more surprisingly, parted ways with Alex Dabrinkit, who had many people wondering if the Blackhawks were looking to tank. If they were tanking, then it makes some sense to get draft picks like they did in this deal and use them to draft guys like Frank Nazar, who is a solid player, might be too undersized to have a big role in the NHL. Also, what makes little sense is giving up on a 21-year-old Doc, who would ideally be a perfect candidate for a rebuilding team. 
so it's quite confusing to make sense of what Blackhawks are up to at the moment. The moment you guys clicked on the video, you knew this one was coming. The trade between the Flames and the Panthers wasn't just the biggest this offseason, it was one of the biggest blockbuster trades in recent memory. It's exactly this type of trade that keeps us refreshing our Twitters, waiting for the notification to pop up because with all these players switching teams, it reshapes the Pacific and Atlantic divisions. We'll have to start with Kachuk as he's the best player in this trade. Entering his prime, the 24-year-old set career highs in goals, assists, and points last year. He is perfectly built to help the Panthers, who are already considered Stanley Cup contenders as they finished with the best points total last season but perhaps lack that star to push them over the edge. However, it's not all bad for the Flames either. This could be one of those rare win-win blockbuster trades. The Flames took a heavy blow when they lost their team's future cornerstone, Johnny Gaudreau. Gaudreau had finished second in the scoring race last year, but he tied for that spot. The player Gaudreau was tied with was Jonathan Huberdeau. So in one way, the Flames were able to replace their 150-point score with another 115-point score. They had to part ways with Kachuk, so that still stings. Mackenzie Wieger can help bridge the gap of that loss somewhat as he finished last year with 44 points. But considering the predicament the Flames were left in after Gaudreau walked off, they pulled off a deal that gives them a fighting chance to compete in the Pacific Division. Not to mention that Huberdeau recently signed a long-term deal with the Flames, which was the main risk of this trade. As prior, it wasn't clear if Huberdeau would sign long-term or not. So Flames hopefuls can breathe easily for now. What do you think of the NHL offseason and the trades that went down? Which trade shocked you the most? Which team had the best offseason? And what the heck are the Blackhawks' plans? 